In this tech tip video, I'll demonstrate how to build the optional ball differential on the X12. The ball differential is now only optional. It doesn't come in the kit anymore as of the 22 version. And if you decide to purchase the optional ball diff, um, which is suggested for very low grip conditions, such as asphalt or low grip carpet conditions, you may want to know how to build this in a perfect way. So it's important to build it in a way where you'll have a long lasting diff, but also with good performance, uh, as free as possible, and with uh, no slip at all. So I'm gonna show you the process that I go through to build this. I'll take all these parts out here. Now for the build, I'm gonna utilize two option parts. I'm gonna use the ceramic diff balls as well as the ceramic truss bearing. These two parts are important for a perfectly functioning diff for competition level racing. I mean, you can still use the carbide balls that come with a diff, but I prefer to use the ceramic ones to uh, maximize the performance. So those are nice upgrades, which I can recommend. So what parts do we have here? We have the graphite diff axle, have the diff plates, and 88 tubes burger in this case, which I'm gonna use for my car. Got a truss bearing, diff balls, a nut, and the washers, and some brake cleaner. And we're gonna clean the diff plates, make sure that there's no oil on them. And what I'm then gonna do is I'm gonna polish them to create a, a rough surface onto which the diff balls can grab better. So I'm gonna put this on the diff ring, uh, diff hub holder here. And I'm gonna spray some brake cleaner on the 800 grit sandpaper, which I've got here. And I'm gonna sand it. Sand this in a circular motion. Until you have a rougher surface. It's actually not polishing, I'm sanding the rings. That's what I'm doing here. You can see it's created a, a rougher finish to the to the plate. I'm gonna repeat this process for the for the other one as well. In a circular motion so that it stays 100 percent flat. And then we're gonna clean it. Clean them both actually with brake cleaner. I'm gonna clean this wheel hub that we used to sand these. And we're gonna get rid of the sandpaper. These are now ready to be used for the diff. So, what's next? I'm gonna use a hoodie 
super diff grease to build this diff. It's important to use a good diff grease that lubricates the diff but still doesn't allow any slipping of the diff when it's tightened. So I'm gonna use a bit of the diff grease here onto the the back of the axle here, which is just to hold the plate in place basically. fairly generous amount. I mean it's it's better to have a little bit too much than too little. That way you don't have to rebuild it right away. You can get a few runs out of it. I mean a ball dip definitely needs some maintenance. I mean these are not gonna last forever. You're gonna have to maintain this and rebuild this every now and then. When it gets dry, when it gets greedy it's time to re rebuild it and repeat this process. So, to sand the rings again and add new diff grease. We then add the bearing here. And then we're carefully gonna take these balls out of the bag. It's important to not lose one of these, so I always put these into the tray like this. It's a common mistake to lose one of these balls and then you have to buy a whole new, whole new set of diff balls, which is not so nice. So you can just pop these into the spur gear with your fingers like this. One by one. Multi tool actually works pretty good for this purpose as well. Put these bolts in place. Just three more. Installed, we then install the spur gear onto the diff, like this, and another bearing on top of it. And then we repeat this process for the other side. Some diff grease to hold the plate in place.
fairly generous amount of diff grease to this side as well. Like that. Put this in place. Spin this around a little bit to even out the diff grease. But a lot of bearing goes in here. And the thrust bearing holder. And clean this mess up here. Put the super diff grease away. Finally, we're going to install the truss bearing in the diff. And for the truss bearing, as I said, I'm using the ceramic one for the best possible performance and longer life. And here it's important to pay attention to the diameter of these truss bearing uh, shims because the bigger diameter one goes towards the inside, the smaller one, that is 7.7, .7, to the outside. The big one, 7.9, towards the inside of the diff, and the small one to the outside. Otherwise, you will not be able to tighten the diff properly. I'm then gonna use a hoodie graphite grease onto the truss bearing. It's the best grease you can use for this purpose. Just cover the truss bearing in uh, graphite grease. Install the small shim here, and then the nut. Before we install the nut, we're gonna install these black washers here, facing away from each other. Keep in mind that you put these in the right direction, in the right orientation. And then we tighten down the nut. But don't tighten it down all the way, because we have to break in the diff before we tighten it fully. I'm gonna show you how I do that. Okay, so we have the diff together here. So we'll tighten the nut a little bit more. Okay, so before we tighten this down completely and make it ready for racing, we are going to put it in the car to break it in. So we grab the car here. This is my car that is already race ready. 
and put the diff inside. Put the wheel hub on here. Set the gear mesh. Gear mesh is set. I'm going to put some wheels onto the car. breaking of the diff, which is important to basically to form a groove in the diff plate for the, for the diff ball, so that they get seeded into the diff plate and that way you don't have to tighten the diff as much for it to be tight and without slipping. Okay, so I'm gonna switch on the car, grab my radio. So what we want to do here is we want to use a low RPM and we want to hold one wheel with our hand. Keep a very low RPM, hold one wheel for the diff balls to get seated into the diff frame. Repeat for the other side. You can do this between 20 and 30 seconds in total. Just to break in the div so that when you tighten it, you don't have to over tighten it that much to achieve a non slip action. So then you gradually tighten it until you cannot, while holding the right wheel with your thumb and index finger you cannot spin the left wheel. As you can see, I can still spin it. It means it's too loose that we got some slip here. I'm gonna tighten it a bit more. As you can see now, I cannot spin the left wheel when I hold the right wheel and the spur gear. This means the diff is tight enough, but still free enough to go racing. So we want no slipping, but a free diff action, you see? I can, without too much effort, turn the diff around, which means the diff action is absolutely perfect. Like this, you'll have a diff that will last you several runs with very good performance. Take your time to build a diff. It's going to be worth it in the end. That concludes the diff. Uh, take the video for the X12.